welcome Simon Parks to White TV. Thank you. I'm very happy that I get the opportunity to meet you personally. I'm a huge fan of yours. I saw okay. everything on YouTube and the internet. <laughs> and uh, it's always fascinating, mind-boggling to, to get your information. And I, I was flabbergasted that you also know about mind control, which is one of YTV's main topics, the oh. banking reform and the mind control. Mm. And when I started YTV, I said banking is the most important. Then all those TIs, the target individuals, mm -hmm. came to me and said, please take it up. Nobody does. Mm -hmm. And I thought it is worse to be a slave under mind control than to be a slave under the banks, only an interest slave. <laughs> because if you pay interest, you're still a human. But when <laughs> mind control is too much, mm -hmm. then you leave that level, and that's not good. Mm -hmm. And um, I see that there had been a change in the technology in earlier times, even Egypt and so on. Mm. They made horrible torture, especially to children, so that they compartmentalize the mind. Then they have a kind of hypnosis and trigger words, and so they can steer. And uh, nowadays, uh, they don't need that any longer. They have implants and... Uh, beam scalar waves to the implants and the commandos, or they have your blood, your DNA, which is an antenna for scalar waves, mm. beaming, sending and receiving, and then they make it that way. Mm. And uh, there I saw that you are talking about etheric implants also. So could you brief us a little bit about the world of the implants? Okay, I will just... Uh, I agree with everything you've said, Henning. Everything you've said is correct. <clears throat> but in the high-end families on this planet, the uh, physical torture is still used because it is seen as part of the bloodline tradition. So um, much of my work uh, is taken up with um, working with people who have had that physical torture, as you said, to create uh, multiple personalities. Um, suicide programs, um, then demonic attachments. So although um, it may seem <clears throat> barbaric in terms of the new technology, it is seen as the right and proper traditional method. The advanced technologies you refer to are for blanket control. Yes, you can bring the beam in to focus on one particular target or one particular individual, but the whole object of that was actually to widen the beam to control groups of people in different parts of the world at the same time or to control population centers. So the technology that existed for now for the last 15, 20, possibly 25 years um, in terms of the application of it, because the knowledge has been there for a very long time, that is seen as a wide-scale weapon, not an individual weapon, um, because most high-end people, whether they're in the banking industry or in the uh, political line, have had physical torture done to them, but the implants are placed in there to always bring them back should they start to stray. So with the implants, there are two sorts of implants, physical and non-physical. Within the physical, there are uh, two types, human created and alien created. Within the um, etheric or the um, auric, there were until very recently only one sort of implant, which was an alien implant. But now the humans have that technology as well, and they can do that. Um, not all implants are harmful. I have many people who come to me um, um, and ask for an implant to be taken out. But before I'll do that, I need to check that it's a harmful implant. Interesting. Because there may be, a person has a heart condition, and some force has placed an implant to make sure they don't die. There are other implants which are not good, um, but we have to always make sure before we decide to take something out that it's actually going to, to be the right thing to do. Um, Dr. Lear was a very well-known mm -hmm. surgeon um, who removed physical implants. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I don't know the method that he used in terms of deciding whether one was good or bad, 
but certainly these were small black objects, uh, smaller than a grain of rice. I always talk about a grain of rice, they're actually smaller than a grain of rice. And what they do is they grow DNA tissue from the person around it, mm-hmm. so that when that is placed into the individual, the body doesn't reject it. And gives energy to it. Well, what it does is it grows connections and neurons through the DNA material to physically touch the metal part of the implant so that the implant then has connection via to the spinal cord wherever it's placed. You see you can't just put an implant into somebody and there has to be what they call an interface between the implant and the individual. So so the, the body of the individual, it's, it's the law of the universe, the body has to accept it. So it grows, right, um, I have a shop, this is how universe law works, if I have a shop and I sell things I could stand outside the shop and shout that I've got an orange for sale, but it's much better if you knock on the door and come in and say, I'd like to buy an orange. So what happens is the body grows the neurons through and connects to the implant so that the, in the universal law, it's, oh, well, the body came, the body came to the implant, so the body wants the implant. It's it's very much like um, people often say to me, why don't the good aliens throw the bad aliens off? Why don't they throw the bad people off? And the answer I give them they don't like. And the answer is 1% of the human population controls 99% of everybody else. So there's a rule that says, you lot, you 99%, you must want this. Because why did you allow 1% to control you? So you must allow it. And that is why lots of good aliens won't come in because the until human consciousness rises and rejects this 1%, we don't get the full amount of help. So this runs through everything that the higher uh, law works on. Mm-hmm. So with an implant, uh, the reason the body doesn't reject it is because, first of all, it sees it as part of itself. And the reason that the bad guys say that they have a right to implant people is because the body is growing into the implant and accepting it. <laughs> So that's the, that's the argument they use. Of course it's wrong, but that's the argument they use. So a wide range of implants doing everything from monitoring somebody, checking their body um, through satellites or psychic control where they are at any time, able to give them a migraine, able to make them just faint straight away on the ground, um, able to make them change their mind, give them video pictures or straight pictures or words or voices in their head. Um, it's really quite fascinating from a professional standpoint, yes. it is, but from a human standpoint, it's evil, yes. it's disgusting, and it has to stop. Yes. But uh, technologi- technologically, it's very, very clever. Yeah, of course it is. But, but that is the, the high end for the group control, but as I come back to finally, through bloodlines, it is always the hard uh, torture, the electric shock treatment, um, the uh, use of puppets or car- cartoon characters to split the, 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 the person's personality. So I, I wouldn't want you to think they've stopped all that. Mm-hmm. That's still going on and will always go on as long as they, they're in control. How do they hypnotize the compartment of a soul? Uh, is it the usual no, uh, techno- they're, they're, No, they're not hypnotizing the soul at all. Uh-huh. It's the brain. They okay. cannot control the soul. You cannot control the soul. Yeah. You can imprison the soul, but you can't destroy it or control it. Okay. It is the organic brain that is being yes. compartmentalized. But again, the, the, the individual is creating that themselves. That is why these things sustain and live, because the individual has created them out of free will. If you give a child pain, it will create something to take the pain. Mm-hmm. So the law says... That child created that. Mm-hmm. So you have to understand the way the law works. In order to counter it, to be able to change it and to put people back and make them healthy and well, you have to understand how these processes were done and what rules they've used and why they did it, because they'll do it differently for each person. And in, in this old-fashioned way, there's a problem that if they grow older, they lose the programming and then a suicide program is taking over. About the age of 27. And Michael Jackson, he was oh, older? Yes. Yes. Because he was older when they killed him. Because he, if you were a very strong person, 
and you have people to support you, um, you can go on, but your health suffers. Mm. And Michael Jackson had people who were supporting him and helping him within the own industry, within the Hollywood. And a very energetic, powerful man. So they last longer. Also, it isn't always in the interests of the, the big money men for someone to die at a certain time. <laughs> okay, they yeah. will keep you going. <laughs> and, you know, and it, it, it's just for anybody who watches music and is into music, you know, I, I've never met Sir Elton John, but I would just like to thank Sir Elton John for all the work he did with Lady Gaga, mm -hmm. to support Lady Gaga and to help her through her difficult times. Mm -hmm. So in, in Hollywood, in the music industry, there are good people who will come to the aid of other people, and we see that. Yeah, and uh, concerning to, uh, to the, referring to the etheric implants, I once got it described as like a, 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 a hood with cables coming out and things like that. That's interesting. Um, well, no, the, what's been described there is a form of technology that isn't... Um, there at the time. That's a vision that somebody has. When I'm deprogramming somebody, um, that person will always have a vision of the program or the implant. That is how it appears to them. This is the first stage of deprogramming them. So somebody's higher self is trying to warn the physical body there is something here and this is how it appears to that person. When an implant is placed in electronically um, or etherically, the other person at the other end, the bad guy, will wear a device to boost, it's usually a male, to boost his psychic strength. So the, the cap you're talking isn't worn by the victim, but it is worn by the person who is sending that because it is boosting... Interesting. Not on all cases, but on some cases, mm -hmm. um, so that, that that can divide into colors, numbers, shapes, and different commands and different information. You see, you mustn't just think of the brain sending one message. The brain can be split and send lots of different messages. Mm -hmm. So it's very complicated to explain. But what you're seeing there is um, a construct, how somebody would see it. Uh, I'll give you an example. Um, um, the oldest person I've ever helped was nearly 60. So the type of programming there was very primitive. It was yellow brick road programming. But the youngest person I ever saw was 16 years old. So here the programming is far more advanced. And in this case, there were traps laid for people like me. Because back, back 40, 50 years ago, they didn't expect anybody would be able to deprogram, so they never put booby traps in. Well, now they know there are people who, who pro, uh, deprogram the programming, so they put booby traps in to try and catch you or to trigger a suicide program in the individual. Um, so it's very much like um, the old films of bomb disposal, where you have the wire cutters and you think, well, which cable do I cut? Is it the red or the green? <laughs> Awful. Yes, because we're not talking about breakfast cereal. We're not talking about motor cars. We're talking about real living people. Yes. You know, um, and I will help anybody who wants to get better. I got a lot of criticism for helping um, somebody who was linked to the Rothschilds. Why not? But, but when that person was, was a young girl, she never asked to be tortured. Yeah. So I'm doing it because this is a human being. Sure. And, you know, so again, there's a lot of people I think out there on the internet who just really don't understand what goes on. Yes. Um, and they think they would actually run out of the room being physically sick if mm -hmm. they actually knew what goes on. I get every day emails, letters, phone calls from TIs all over the world, mm -hmm. and they ask, um, uh, can you uh, take a new scanning session? Uh, I want to know, uh, do I have an implant or not? Mm -hmm. um, can you explain how we can detect or scan them? Mm. Well, uh, you have to be a psychic person. It's, there's a difference between being spiritual and psychic. Mm -hmm. If you're a psychic person, you will be able to detect, in most cases, the implants, but not always. 
and one type of implant may not be, be spotted by a person. You see, um, I have a vision. I would, I'm, I'm not a wealthy man. I have a vision. I would love to have a holistic centre, to run a centre where you have a group of people because one person scanning somebody may not pick that up, but you, you have, I would have someone sit in the middle and you have six people around them. Mm -hmm. You see, and you are looking at the quadrants, each different sides. Because one person who's psychic will be very different from the following person. And your own makeup, the own way your brain works, mean that you will detect some things that others won't. So if you sat someone in the middle and you had six people around them, at least two to three of them would pick up the whole pattern. But often, you see, it's very hard to get it. So you'll go to one person... And a person will do a reading and they'll say, no, you haven't got any. Or, yes, you've got one. But maybe they've missed some. So it's not a foolproof answer. And, and we, we could not go and buy some instrument. We, we were around uh, three years ago in, in, in Germany with the usual uh, scanner for electromagnetic waves. And there, there was also a good picture because yeah. every wave has a part of electromagnetic... Uh, well, it's, it's, sc it's scalar waves, really. It's, it's electromagnetic waves, you, you know. Uh, they operate differently. The, the, the waves operate differently. Um, you can detect fluctuations in the field. Mm -hmm. There are sensitive equipment that will detect... If you drop a, a little tiny pebble or a grain of sand into a pool of water, there will be ripples. Mm -hmm. And what you have to do is you have to get the person, you show them pictures on a screen. Pictures, symbols, numbers, colours. And then depending on the history of that person, you know, I would have to talk with that person for a while. Then use trigger words and that would activate the chip or the implant and then it would disturb the field very slightly. Mm -hmm. So that then would appear on an electromagnetic or a, um, a, a very high intensity photograph. You would actually see it. Not it, but the disturbance. Here in Great Britain they have a guy, I think it's Mike Oldfield or mm -hmm. that name, he has a PEP camera. Mm -hmm. There is an improvement of the Kirlian photography mm -hmm. from the Aura mm -hmm. and this camera photographs, it's a moving mm -hmm. video camera, mm -hmm. the Aura in a very special and high uh, mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. Do you know whether with this, that instrument one could detect it? Yes, but you would have to try to activate the implant so that it would show itself. Mm -hmm. because these things are also very stealthy. <laughs> so if you make it active, it's a bit like a, a, a submarine. If it sends a, a message, mm -hmm. or, then mm -hmm. you can detect it, but if it's just silently running, you, yeah. you don't get it. So it's the same yeah. principle. It's a, every so often, a technology is made, and then you have to catch up with it. Both sides try to outthink the other. Professor Mai, uh, the new Tesla, said it is so difficult to scan scalar waves because they do not have open field lines. Yes. It is a closed system. Yes. Do you know about one scanner uh, for, for no, scalar but waves? The, but the point is, you see, that if I may say so, you're making the same mistake. Mm. You are looking for technology to give you the answer. Mm. These things are used from technology, but they are also placed by psychic ability. So you will detect and you will remove them psychically. Mm -hmm. Because if you were to bathe that person's auric field in enough energy to fry, for want of a better word, mm -hmm. that device, you will actually harm the individual. Uh -huh. You can't do that. Also important information. You can't do that. One of the, one of the ways um, that uh, a... You'll find this interesting, I think. Humans also implant people, okay, mm -hmm. but not bad humans. Um, let us say that you were going to be taken by the reptilians. I want to know about them, so I might implant you, because I want to know about the reptilians. I'm not a bad person. No, I'm no, a, no, no. But what they do, what they do is they make all humans the very first time a human is taken off world physically or etherically um, if they're physical they make them take their clothes off and they walk past a bank of crystals um, and some of these crystals are 
five meters tall. Beautiful, beautiful pyramid crystals. Uh, and I am not, I don't know how they're connected. But they make the humans walk past the crystals. And then the screen, there's a separate room. And the screen shows if they have implants. So they have the technology mm. to, to, to find both sorts of implants. Mm. So it obviously exists, mm. but it is one of the uh, technologies that they're not willing to share with the humans. I found out that homeopathic gold is giving a quite good shield. Yes. And um, I also had to find out in some cases they have a technology to overrule this shield. Um, uh, do you know a little bit more what they do there and how we can... Um, it actually is to do with the individual. Mm. If the individual is incredibly psychic, uh, you use what you're calling homeopathic gold. I'll call it silver gold or white gold. Mm -hmm. that's my term for it, mm -hmm. then it is possible for that individual to remove that. They can actually do that. Now, it gives a blanketing protection. It dumbs it down, it dulls it down, and therefore it becomes very obvious. And the, the individual can perceive it as a black mark or a blob or a spot somewhere. They see, can see it. And once you can see it, you can target it. That's why these things ain't remain hidden. Um, It's also about raising the elevation of the individual because if an individual is not particularly psychic then they will not have the capability to help in the process of removing it because the individual has to actually help to remove it. Mm -hmm. You can't just expect someone else. The devices that you're talking about to overcome that gold I am not familiar with. Mm -hmm. I'm told that there are machines that can do that but this is what I mean. One side does something, then someone thinks of something else, then someone else. It's, it's the difference, isn't it, between um, the old days when you would wear armor and then you'd have to get thicker armor and thicker armor and thicker armor. It, 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 in a way, this is, this is not the right conversation. The right conversation is how do, we, how do we protect ourselves from getting them in the first place? How can we remove them ourselves? Because I don't think that humankind should just rely on machines to mm -hmm. do the jobs. Mm -hmm. um, and you, it is capable, you are capable in most cases to remove them yourself. But if trouble is, people don't believe they can do it. In the case I work uh, with a guy very close, I don't want to name names just now. Uh, the gold held very well. Then he was tricked to travel to the United States two times uh -huh. and then right. it did not help. Right. A little bit, yes, but, but now they right. have control. Well, well, in that case, that's really very simple. Um, when you use that sort of material, your, not your frequency changes, but the connection between uh, yourself and your higher self alters mm -hmm. slightly out of phase, which brings you the protection. But if you allow yourself to fall into enemy hands, they will just take a sample of that, And they will then rephase, or it's a bit like an old-fashioned radio where you tune it in. When you use the gold, you turn the dial, and it's off. It's off channel. But if a bad person can take a sample of that, they can then turn it back in. <laughs> That's what happened. But he would physically have had to be taken. So he may have no memory, but he would physically yes, have to be in a hotel room. they needed him over there. That was That's for what sure. they did. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, the similar things to, to, um, to people in this country. Uh, we had a, a guy called uh, McKinnon, who was a whistleblower, who amazingly hacked into the Pentagon and uh, saw the secret space program. Mm -hmm. um, and um, they wanted to extradite him to America and basically put him in jail forever and ever. Big, big battle went on. Um, America and Britain obviously very close and you couldn't imagine Britain stopping him going well the deal was that uh, he isn't very well and he attended hospital so he went three trips to hospital I bet you the doctors were American and then he didn't have to go wasn't extradited because I expect he doesn't remember anything now so you know this is, this is what perhaps annoys me mm -hmm. is that people are very naive 
you know, you explain something to them, you show them, they say they understand it, and then a offer is made to them which seems to be too good to be true, but they'll go for it, and they allow themselves to be caught again. Mm-hmm. I learned that about 10 to 15 percent are not uh, uh, easy to target. Uh, Dr. Barry Trower said that in uh, the interview with me, and I heard it in other ways, and you and Swerdler say, Black Americans are more difficult to target. Mm. What, what makes that difference that they are not so easy to target? Um, simply because in, in human history, that particular racial group was not chosen to be a group that would be worked with. Um, there were the Draconis reptilians are white skinned. And to them, the color white is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. So out of racism, and that's basically what it comes to, they mm -hmm. didn't choose to work with the black skins. And I'll give you an example of it. Um, one black group they did work with was the Zulu tribe. Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, fantastic warriors, really brilliant soldiers. But, but in the days when they were fighting the British, um, a young black man in the army of the Zulu army would have a cowhide shield he wasn't allowed to have any white on it <laughs> if he was successful in battle he went back to his elders and he could then take another skin from a cow with a little bit of white on it and he showed the elders and said is that all right is it too much white and if they said that's all right ultimately if he survived he would end up with a white shield why would black people want a white shield Why would, you, why would you do that? It's because it's been taught to them. And Kreda Mutwa, a very, very uh, um, eloquent gentleman, yes. talked very clearly about the reptilian culture. Yes. So the Zulus were interacted with, but purely from a military perspective. And you see the, 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 um, the ceremony and the ritual, the Zulus have something called washing of the spears. After a battle, mm -hmm. you go into, you wade out into the river up to your thighs, and you wash your spears, your assegai in the water. Mm. Very, very ritualistic. So it's not true to say that, that black people are not acted with, but it is true to say that um, the switch that was placed in all white or European genetics was not placed in them. This is a switch that allows an alien to take control of a human's mind. That is why all genuine contactees, abductees, experiences, never report an alien has a gun. Why do aliens not have guns? Because they don't need them, because they can just switch you off. Mm -hmm. But they can't do it with black people very easily. Uh, they can do it with some, but it's m very hard work for them. And you said once the blue light the police is using has to do with that. Yes. Um, I've, I have a recollection of, of uh, 1963, so I would have been three and a half years old. Um, and I saw an alien creature hold his wand up to me and um, I described the end as a crystal with the facets and each facet lit up in a clockwise so boom, 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 boom. and when it had come right round, blue light out boom, and I felt I was floating out of the room um, that's why the police and the ambulance all, all um, forces use the blue light because If you have a blue light being flashed behind you, you start to make decisions that are not normal. So that is why in America, the police just sit back and wait for the person to crash the car. And I have heard that if you imagine purple light, uh, ah. then that is a kind of shield. Yes, because it's a higher frequency than blue. Uh -huh. <laughs> so simple. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 uh, how how can we solve the problem with mind control? How can we liberate the planet? Uh, besides, there are obviously stations on the moon and the Saturn rings that are also making mass mind control here on the planet. Um, I think it's all part of the, the consciousness rise. Mm -hmm. um, I think that when, and I believe that when human consciousness rises to a very high level. It won't be possible to mind control people mm -hmm. because they change their reality. Mm -hmm. And also a lot of these elite power structures will have to go 
they'll either physically be, be pulled down literally yeah. there will be riots on the street it will happen mm -hmm. um, um, but I think in most cases people just quietly pack their bags and leave yeah and one important question on the technology I found out they love to use the cell phone technology to piggyback on the cell phone yes. uh, which is also using a lot of scalar waves yes. especially close to the antennas to piggyback their mind control programs could you confirm that yes that's why major cities have had these little aerials these little antennas that have been placed in shopping centers um, in, in major major towns mm -hmm. uh, if you are a small town they're not bothered but if you're a major conurbation they are you can uh, piggybacking is one word but there's a better word which is um, subduction in other words the the carrier wave the, the legitimate telephone wave these things don't just sit on the top they sit within them. You know with in digital, if you're going one, two, one, two, one, two, you can put another code inside. You don't have to be separate. Because code. it's longitudinal words. Yes, you can actually put it in. As mm -hmm. long as you're decoding it the other side and you can decode two separate messages or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So it, it 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 doesn't piggyback it in that sense. It piggybacks it because it gives it the energy to follow. It gives it the root way. It's like taking a stick and dropping it on a river and the river as you watch the stick the river takes the stick out mm -hmm. so it gives it that route um, now how that works on the person is that at a set time of the evening that's why anybody in the know leaves their mobile phones out of their room you know when they go to bed at night because that's when the messages can be given particularly at night because you're in a different form of sleep your brain mm -hmm. has gone into that different different waves mm -hmm. um, they've tried it particularly in Britain when there were some demonstrations some 10 15 years ago from helicopters mm -hmm. so you wanted to do an experiment on a group of people in the Iraq war as well yeah mm -hmm. so you're looking at um, can you change the mood of these people and I heard that the earlier analog television had the mind control signal through the sound. And when they got digital, the it is the flickering of the picture. Yeah, picture. Yeah. Yes, picture. Yes. Yes. Um, there were two reasons why all of Europe moved from the analog to the digital. One was because it made it easier. But the second thing was it's so much easier to hack digital. It's incredibly hard to eavesdrop on analog communications it's incredibly hard and that's why in Britain we were forced to go to digital it actually was a rule and a law we had to give all our analog mm -hmm. phones up and, and that happened across Europe mm. so um, the elite steer the people where they want and as long as the people don't have the knowledge they won't see but when they have knowledge they won't be pushed that's what we must do we must make sure that people are aware of this technology there's nothing wrong in the technology it's how it's, it's being a tool, used yes, yes. exactly mm -hmm. right yeah yeah are there are other kind of technologies where they spread mind control um in a loose way with with chem chemical trails mm -hmm. with tiny 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 nanoparticles or nano robots i suppose we could call that some form of mind control although it's much more of a physiological control um, what you can do is if you put a nano robots into an individual and you can send an electromagnetic through a scalar wave because you mix them you can mix them I know you will have read about that you can mix the two so you get pulses you can activate different um, robots or different um, implants in an individual so if you have a prime minister and you have a very important uh, bill in legislation to be signed into parliament you could influence that individual on what to do mm. that's how advanced it is how do the Morgellons come in here because a lot of TIs complain about Morgellons that is artificial structures in the skin and itching and well they can grow the body will grow that if you send a code if you send a DNA code 
into an individual, it will grow that. The, I forget the Japanese gentleman um, who did the experiments with ice crystals and water. Yeah, um, Moto. Moto. Mm -hmm. Well, this is not. He's dead now, unfortunately. Mm. This is not dissimilar, because crystalline structure or a shape can be grown from um, molecules, from tiny, tiny bits. It will grow. The body will grow that. So not grafted in. You can send. A, me a message for very tiny things in the body to join and send a message, a DNA program to create something. So you can actually, um, a living creature can be programmed physically, not just mentally. So you could technically grow another finger mm -hmm. because you would send that information to the body and you would override the genome that says you should have four and a thumb. And you say, no, 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 that's not right. You need another one here. Oh, yes, I do. And it will grow one. That's perfectly normal. And what's the purpose of the Mogellons? To um, operate or to uh, have portals or areas where um, others can connect to. <laughs> portals? Hmm. Small ones, but mm. where you can connect to. Does that make sense to you from yes, there? Okay. Yes, mm. it's interesting. Because I thought it was to test uh, artificial intelligence and robotization of humans. Well, it is. That's, that, well, that's the end game. Mm. That is the end game. Yeah. But in order to, to get there, you need to access that person directly from wherever. And, and the chemtrails, uh, uh, are they connected to the HARP system and, and uh, uh, prolonging radar beams for mind control? Um, they are connected to the HARP system in the sense that by altering the weather, you can maintain higher pressure and maintain some of those elements in the higher atmosphere. Mm -hmm. They would fall down naturally over time. So you use HARP to push them up. Um, one of the original points of the chemtrails wasn't to kill off the human race. Um, I suppose I should say that uh, an, an ET, an extraterrestrial, is somebody who comes here in real time. In other words, he or she jumps in a spaceship and it may take them 20 years to get here. Mm -hmm. That is an ET, extraterrestrial. Mm -hmm. But somebody who goes into a portal and it takes them three seconds to get here, that is an extra-dimensional entity. Mm -hmm. Well, in 1944, the Americans and the British bombed the Ruhr, and they decided to try and confuse the German radar by dropping strips of aluminum foil, mm -hmm. tin foil, and it's called Operation Window, and it worked. Well. A lot of the chemtrails contain tiny, 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 tiny pieces of aluminum foil. When an alien spacecraft materializes in our dimension from any other dimension, it creates a ripple effect in these tiny pieces of aluminum react, and that shows on a radar. Because when a, a, a spaceship comes into the third dimension in an atmosphere without that, the radar won't show that. It'll be in infrared as well. But with the aluminum foil, it creates a ripple on that bit. So that was the main reason they were doing that. Then they decided to put, put bacteria in there and viruses in there. And nanoships. Yes, yes, that's the last one. And that's why when people sometimes find a gooey substance, mm -hmm. that's the nutrients that these things are living in. It's to protect them. <laughs> and, and, you know, you were ejected out many of them die, so that was to protect them. Yeah, the, the nano stuff is the latest. That's within the last maybe seven years. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you told us you are living very, very close to something mm. extremely interesting, a three-phased radar. Right. Yes. What is that and what's the purpose? Well, the official uh, line is, of course, it's um, actually it's the only three-phased array in the world. There is no other. It is the only one. Uh, its official purpose is to detect... Um, Missiles fired by rogue countries, um, which might be aimed at America, and to launch an interceptor missile and knock them out. That's the official line. Um, I don't believe that for a minute. Uh, it has twofold purpose. Mm -hmm. uh, again, I need to explain to your listeners that when we talk about radar, 
most people have an idea of a screen with a white line that goes around and shows the bleeps of the different mm -hmm. aircraft. Well, that's not the radar that we're talking about. We're talking about a radar that can produce photographs better than any camera. Oh. So that's what a ra phase the radar does. It sends out energy which bounces back off something and creates a picture. Now, I've been to one of these was invited and had a tour and when you go through um, the main doors there is a picture of the International Space Station on the wall and it's about I don't know two meters square it's a big picture but it's not a picture taken with a camera it's a picture taken with a radar so I don't know how many thousands of miles up that was but it's a beautiful picture so these these phased arrays are capable of taking pictures out in space they're also capable of detecting any spacecraft as well as a rocket, but they are also capable of um, mind control because the energies can be used. In fact, um, anybody working on that area must not be more than three meters off the ground because it's dangerous. So you couldn't be cleaning windows. So anything higher than three meters, you can't do it. How, how is that? <laughs> Well, the base, the actual where the base is positioned with the radar, the, the energy coming out at the, is so powerful that it, it would hit you and fry your brain. So you, and also, no airplanes are allowed to fly within five kilometers of it. I, I learned from Tom Bearden, for example, that they need a two-phase radar array, uh, and that is sufficient to make the mind control. Uh, what is the third phase oh, for? To go right around the Earth. Ah, very interesting. Mm. Would you like, finally, to add some important information to the targeted individuals, how they can improve their situation? Um, well, I'm sure that they're con contacting you and you're advising them. Um, I'm, I'm happy to, to work with them as well, individually. I'm, you know, I have a website. And yes, you have a lot of TIs. Yeah, they can they can come to me. Um, the prob the problem is that it depends why they have become targeted. This is this is the answer because unless you know why they've been targeted, you won't know what the energy is behind that. Because many people will say, "Well, what's the difference? I'm being targeted. I want it stopped," mm -hmm. and that's a natural reaction. But unfortunately, there has to be the preparatory work beforehand. I would, I would need to know who's doing it, when it started, how did it start. And once you understand why, you can begin to track back. Um, so, for instance, you know, you'd remote view back to the people doing it. Are we dealing with Americans, British, Chinese? Who are we dealing with? What sort of people are they? Are they male? Are they female? Why are they doing it? There's all that work that has to be done. Um, because you can't just say, oh, yes, you know, take two of these tablets and you'll be fine. Because they'll just reconnect. Mm -hmm. You can't break it because they'll be reconnected. So you have to send a message to the people doing it. Mm -hmm. This individual is no longer your responsibility. <laughs> you are not allowed to do this anymore. My impression was uh, with the TIs when they uh, complained about gang stalking, that they were randomly chosen to train the computers, which mainly making the mind control, to react when people are waking up. Yes, there are lots of um, war games that are played out, lots of scenarios and situations. So um, at the moment, in a physical way, in America, there's a big military operation going on called Jade Helm, where they are um, computer playing out how many American cities could they lose to, to revolution. And in the same way, an artificial intelligence will say, uh, we will look at a set proportion or percentage of a population in terms of their economic, their intelligence level, their spiritual level, male or female, um, whether they had it, what backgrounds they had. And they will then will do exa um, experiments or tests with them to see how easy it is with different people to achieve the same result. Um, everyone's doing it. There was, um, uh, I can't remember the name of the creature, not a mantis, uh, very well known to the American military. Um, uh, looks like a mantis, but isn't, and has a head very much like a, a bishop on a chess piece. 
and it turned up uh, at somebody's doorstep, literally. Not a, a, a very important person, someone who didn't earn very much money. And the, this woman opened the door, saw this creature, and it just stood there. And the individual went and grabbed her phone and took pictures of it. And it stood there for about five minutes, literally. This is occurring now because both sides are trying to see where humanity is in terms of its ability to accept or change. So just as the good guys are saying, can you accept me, you're, you're not a special person in the terms you didn't have MI5 family, um, you know, a very humble background. If I stand in front of you, what are you going to do? And then they'll go back and say, actually, the human race is getting more accepting. We might be on target here. And the bad guys run programs and they say, well, okay, um, someone between the ages of 35 and 50 is very susceptible to this type of attack. So they've learned that, so they'll use that. That's the in-depth. You see, artificial intelligence goes into many layers. It doesn't just think linearly. It will, it will go into many layers and it will look at that. And you have to understand that. You have to understand what's doing. So um, that's why I can't work with many people because it's so demanding. You know, you may, I may only work with may, maybe 25 people a year. Yeah. You know. But I can't, unfortunately, say, oh, yes, you know, if you all jump in, 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 in the Tiber River or you all go, and go into the River Nile, you're all going to be made better. Yeah. It doesn't work like that. But there, there, there are ways of helping people. Yeah. And the other thing I will just finally say is that um, a lot of what I do, I don't say openly, because there are many people who would like to know what I do from the evil side, the bad side. Uh, oh, that's what he does. Okay, well, we'll mm -hmm. do that for the future. The individuals I work with won't say anything because it's made them better. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it is a battle. Yes. It is a battle. And ultimately, um, anybody who's bad, um, this isn't the place for them. They have to go. Good message. And I don't really care where they go as long as they go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we are very grateful for your help and information, Simon. And uh, it was really wonderful to Thank listen you. to it's you. Thank you. It's been lovely to see you. The same. Yeah. Thanks. Good.